Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Where's Moby here from the Independent View, giving you a roundup of all the news for Mortal Kombat. And this week, we're going to focus solely on the new invasion mode. So without further ado, let's go check out some of the gameplay which has recently been released. As you can see, this is essentially a ladder platform type game where where it essentially gives you the mode to transverse stages or transverse a stage via a ladder slash board type system. So some of the interesting things about this game is that essentially it's set up it's like a, a mixture between the Towers of Time which we had in Mortal Kombat 11 and the Crypt. However, the big W that I'm seeing with this is that it requires less exploration. So you're not running back and forth in terms of finding things but the, I would say the problem with that is that there are, there are those enthusiasts that do prefer finding and running around to look at different things. So just looking at some of the key items in the game, and I'm just going to go through the video itself by swapping at key points. If you want to watch the, the full video for yourself, I will leave it down in the description below so you can actually watch the full 12 minutes. It's essentially game fights and I just want to focus on some of the key elements so that you get the most out of the time that you're spending watching this video. And while you're at it guys, um, take two seconds to drop a like and if you are new to the channel, subscribe. Um, lots of gaming content coming your way from, from the independent view. But without further ado, take a look at this below. We've got key items which are essentially items you will, or infantry that you obtain during the game. So if you look at this, we've got coins and then we also have a key item which is allowing you to gain access to Johnny Cage's mansion, which is kind of like the first setting for this invasion mode. One of the things that you want to also take a look at is on the left hand side, you can see there are three types of currencies. They don't really tell us what it is, but we've got coins, which is essentially the first one. And then I think on the far right hand side, well, the right hand side, we got the uh, dragon crystals right but then there's one below that as well which they just don't mention so hoping that to get a breakdown of exactly what these currencies are because you know how it goes with most of these um, new games with microtransactions and things that really just put people off in terms of what you want to see so hopefully we get some more information about that the next step i want to just touch on guys is around the navigation of the game. So if you're looking at this screenshot below from the video, right, we essentially have three ways of, of moving around the map. You've got green and gold, which is basically pathways, which leads to unlocked encounters, so basically previous encounters, and then red pathways, which are locked encounters. So maybe you have to do a certain challenge, maybe you have to fight someone to unlock that pathway. And from what I've seen so far, you can partake in tower mode, um, within this game there will be test your might and then there are other random challenges as well during the game which is quite fun and different from what i've seen in previous more comments but i'll show you that a bit further in this video so there's just a lot to do in terms of the offline mode which they are making available to people that maybe want to spend less time exploring or playing in a rank mode or playing in a combat um or playing in online versus and just want to enjoy the game for themselves right so that's that's a cool aspect that they are taking into account and it's great to see that they're learning from the the game or from the previous titles in in what people want so the next one guys is looking at the stats system this is a bit further on through the video i just want to give me a second to find so guys, for this one, you can see we've got something called stat points, right? So essentially, you can level up your character as you're playing the game. So you're basically building the strong character that, um, and we'll look at a, basically a ranking system a, a bit um, a bit late in the video. But you're basically creating a stronger character so that you are able to take on the challenges later on in the game, which is kind of a fun, light-hearted RPG aspect that they are bringing to the game, and which just adds an additional layer instead of just repeating a fight every single time and once you are I would say efficient in the way you 
um, play with certain character it will become a lot easier for you so nice little touch that they, they're including something like that into the game next up is just a screenshot of how the stats that you earn are actually used in the game itself so this is a nice little view you can see we've got sub zero here um there's also the auto assign option to assign your, your score so assuming you get five points when you um when you've leveled up your character and then you basically just need to start assigning these points onto your five different measures so you can see you've got agility you've got defense special attack and health and that's basically the, the key things that, that you need to focus on your character um hopefully in terms of building them up to be better in this mode and then some interesting things at the bottom we've got resistances and then we've got equipped relic so they didn't really go into an equipped relic a lot. I know there are details around a talisman, but if you look at resistance, you got acid, blood. Blood makes me think of an Atara. You got chaos, makes me think of havoc. You got dark. Not entirely sure who encompasses dark powers. Maybe someone like Serena, and then you got electric, which is of course Raiden. So interesting to see um, the different aspects of how they're using. Um, the, the different powers within the game. You've got energy, it could be the May, fire, scorpion of course, ice, sub zero, magic, Sindal maybe, and then physical, the likes of uh, Shokan or, or maybe even Garrus. Alright, so interesting to see how these um, resistances or these types of resistances works in the game. Um, just once again adding that additional element to to make you really play the game um, and play this mode. Then guys, one of the interesting things that I really wanted you guys to see was a definition or an example of interesting gameplay within this invasions mode. So sit back and um, as we can see, we've got, it's called survive and you've got Liu Kang essentially dodging multiple fireballs in the game itself and for me this is just weird funky and it's so different right i mean how hectic is that that you actually got new game dodging multiple fireballs and yeah it's part of the game it's, it's one of the challenges um so yeah i, I think that is a, a very cool aspect um and just something different that they that they are bringing into the game so next guys we are looking at just overview of the first season and just some more information about the invasions because i think that's basically the the big part about this game that i think everybody wants to focus on right so invasions guys is the first season is starting um as soon as the game releases i assume and it focuses on a hanzo usashi who is essentially looking for his wife in one of the alternative timelines when she's still alive right and this makes us look at actually get to know Hanzo Sashi. so very cool that you actually see that he exists in this game maybe in this format hopefully he's in the, the other story but but hoping to see more of him so the clear thing is here is that this is six week cycles and every six weeks we are going to get more information around or you're going to get a brand new invasion mode my only concern with this is that within the six week cycle what happens to the gear or the customization or the rewards that is applicable within that six weeks cycle is it gone um do i lose it? Do, is there another way for me to get it um do i need to pay for it you know these are the questions that, that i would love to to know so just so you guys get an idea of good thinking about if you recall previously, you always had Towers of Time, which was always available, and you had the ability to always purchase these items from the shop. However, you needed Dragon Crystals um, in MK11, which wasn't that bad to get, but you never know what currency or how easy that currency will be available in Mortal Kombat 1. So guys, looking at some of the rewards within this, um, I would say within this floating point, is a sub-zero skin as you can see uh, it's, it's not a full ninja but it's got a the color scheme is, is a bit different and it's more aligned to the the season rewards right 
We've then got one for the Tanya, which looks kind of unique, called Sigil of Fire. Once again, aligned with the season that we're playing in. And then the last one that I've seen is Katana Skin. And this is, once again, Gold Melina's Torch Bearer. Right? So the interesting thing about these outfits, or what they are in towards, is that it's all aligned to this new season. right? And the big thing here that, that makes me question or makes me wonder what exactly is it all about is how many rewards are actually available, how much time is required for me to play this game, to actually play this mode rather, to get these rewards. And one thing I've not seen is in previous titles you kind of knew what rewards were available. So in MKW1 you knew that when you played Combat League you would have these 9 or 11 items which were available for you to unlock and you would be able to unlock it so you know, okay fine, those are the three items I do not have, I'm not going to get it. But here it seems very open and endless so I would love to know that there's some kind of checklist or some kind of item or, or overview of the reward system so that I know, okay, I've played the game, I've played this mode, I've got all my rewards. What am I missing? What am I not? Um, so that, that for me is a, is a big deal. But just to, um, not to end it off, but just to give you guys a bit of a run through of uh, the screenshot below, you can see that here we have um, just an overview of the two characters. You can see this is Sub-Zero with a loadout and he has an infantry tab and below it you can see he's got a talisman option and a relic option. And then for Cyrax, who is the, the cameo fighter in this regard, actually has a uh, an element that is also attached to him so lots to explore I'm very excited about what exactly this all encompasses my biggest concern once again is time and how exactly you can actually track your progress to know whether or not you've unlocked all these rewards because there are certain elements in this game where there's an ambush mode where you could be um, transferred by a portal to get more rewards or open other chests and how exactly do you know if you're missing anything right and then six weeks goes and then you're in trouble at least the crypt was there and was available and you would go to the crypt get your rewards cool six weeks time this mode is done what do i do see ya guys let me know what you think about the new invasion mode hope you enjoyed it um if there's anything i missed let me know and yeah guys, I'm um, looking forward to MK1 getting that early start on the 40th of September and having fun with you guys online. Cheers.